FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Responsible gun control. We need to do something to minimize the opportunities for terrorists to get a gun in this country. And this is now something that is critical to homeland security as well as public safety. There's your uh, Department of Homeland Security Director, Je Johnson, talking about looking at ways to prevent terrorists from getting guns. <laughs> I'm sorry, but isn't that always the goal, is to prevent terrorists from getting guns? The, the problem you face, Je, is when the person who buys the gun is a United States citizen who has a firearms ID card and works for a security firm that's employed by the Department of Homeland Security. That's a horse of a different color. And trying to compare the two and draw a line and say this is an example, it doesn't work in this case. And that's the example that a lot of these gun grabbers are trying today. Welcome back into the Mark Cox Show. The president uh, gave a... a, a, a Stunning speech earlier. The, the, the way the headlines read, Obama broadside. President fires back at radical Islam critics. I mean, he just went out of his way today to apologize, basically, um, on what's going on in this particular case with ISIS. Uh, let's go to um, audio soundbite number 31 and how he hit Trump today. We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for president of the United States to bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. We hear language that singles out immigrants and suggests entire religious communities are complicit in violence. Determining the threat to this country is not as simple as summing it up in the president's soundbite. Whether it's from refugees that were being forced by the federal government to take into our states with no idea how they've been uh, filtered, or allowing people to come in here from countries where we know they want to, they have, they have radical elements that want to kill us, why would we not re-examine that? That this president just refuses to go there, sees no benefit from referring to the word radical Islam, and that's something we can talk about this hour. and And I appreciate you joining us. I mean, there's a there's a lot to talk about here. Three one four nine six nine nine seven nine seven. Because I I just find at every turn it's just another example of an excuse to ban a weapon. Uh, the Democrats run to this with every opportunity. It's a common theme for them, which is why I've asked uh, Larry Pratt with the Gun Owners of America to join us this hour to talk a bit more about this uh, current assault on the Second Amendment. Larry, how are you, sir? I am doing well, and it's good to be back with you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's good to have you on the air. I, I just, um, you know, did you hear the president's remarks today? Uh, uh, yes, unhappily, I did. <laughs> as much as I try to tune him out, it's kind of hard to avoid What's what's your reaction to, well, I mean, directly to the gun issue, but then indirectly with his comments on immigration and uh, the like? Well, I, clearly he wants to defend his agenda. Uh, he is not stupid, and he realizes that his desire to fundamentally transform America, which has involved in a key part large amounts of immigrants coming into the country without any effort to assimilate, without any effort to vet, uh, is perhaps going to have some problems. And so, uh, frankly, I think he's whistling past the graveyard. You know, there's nothing here to see. Folks just keep on moving. Well, there is something here to see, and we don't like what we see. No, no, not at all. And, and Hillary Clinton um, has been hitting on this as well, um, and – Again and again and again. Let me listen to this one. I'm sorry, is our stinger up? We have our disagreements about gun safety regulations, but we should all be able to agree on a few essential things. If the FBI is watching you 
for suspected terrorist links, you shouldn't be able to just go buy a gun with no questions asked. It, it, Larry, it strikes me that they just they, they want to try to boil this down to something as black and white as the fact that this guy had been interviewed a couple of years ago and apparently cleared of at least they couldn't find a hard enough evidence to charge him with any wrongdoing. He's an American citizen. I, I, I brought up the conversation earlier that, you know, you, you've got to go pretty far down the path of suspending someone's rights if you're going to suddenly put them on a list and tell them that the Second Amendment doesn't apply to them. Getting rid of guns seems to be so important to uh, people like Secretary Clinton and Barack Obama that they're willing to do away with due process, which is one of the things that makes America different from most of the rest of the world. And to just treat it as if it's uh, an impediment put up by gun nuts and Christian extremists is a great disservice to the history of this country and why this country is so much better than any other place in the world. Well, it's not unlike the, the debate, although the liberals seem to be on the other side of that one, uh, where we've got the NSA spying on phone calls. Um, yeah, they probably were opposed to it because it was on their phone calls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, those of us who really support the Bill of Rights and uh, a free society uh, – don't want the NSA doing that. They violated the law. They should have been punished severely. It should have made other NSA employees worried about going to work because of what they had been doing themselves. But instead, eh, no problem. Have a nice day. Right. Um, th this debate that has raged, uh, well, it really started Sunday afternoon when uh, the congressman from Florida, Grayson, I think is his name, called for a renewal of the assault weapons ban. The president's called for it now. I, I don't use that word on my show unless I'm quoting somebody else. Um, could you could you talk about that for a minute and and how that that term has been abused when it when it comes to um, AR-15s or anything like that? Well, it's a term of deflection. Uh, the problem wasn't the kind of gun that the dirtbag used. The problem was that laws on our books facilitated what the dirtbag did. He attacked a zone, a gun-free zone, which is where all but two of our mass murders have occurred since 1950. And for us to assume that somehow... It's an AR-15, or it's actually some other similar kind of rifle. It doesn't matter. The fact is we opened the door for this dirt bag to come in and shoot with impunity, and there was nobody there to shoot back at the dirt bag. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, how about the argument that I've heard repeatedly on social media today, and of course uh, you're starting to hear the drumbeat nationally as well, about the, um, the, the AR-15 being a weapon of war. I've heard that word thrown around so much. I've heard Hillary Clinton say it. I'm hearing network reporters calling it a... Conan O'Brien was on the air last night calling it a weapon of war. And you talk, I mean, when the comedians... Well, I don't expect too much out of a comedian. Right. Uh, but that's just... It's just wrong. It's wrong, and it shows a gross misunderstanding of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment was intended to preserve the freedom of the American people to own the same kind of rifles and pistols that the military own, so that their freedoms would be to that extent protected. It's not just about uh, uh, hunting and self-defense. Those are nice collateral benefits of the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment is all about freedom, just like the First Amendment is, and the Fourth Amendment is, or well, for that matter, the Third, and all the way, all the way through the rest of the Ten Amendments. So the the idea that somehow it's shocking to say that uh, these firearms might be used in combat, well, duh. <laughs> if the if the if our freedom 
uh, 200 plus years ago had depended on the liberals that exist today, we'd all still be speaking with a British accent. And I we'd mean, be using cap guns. Right. <laughs> and we'd be using cap guns. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mystified when I hear that. It's, it's just a, it's an uncomfortable truth that people who don't appreciate history and how we got to where we are, they don't want to accept it. No. Uh, they want to reject that because they're going in another direction. They, they honestly believe, as liberals, that the government knows best and that the government should be making these kinds of decisions. And it's just scary to think of schlubs like you and me running around with a gun, uh, or let alone a rifle, uh, that might have at one point been used by soldiers. Actually, the AR-15 is not in common use by our military. I uh, frankly think we should uh, commonly own the rifles that are used by our military, even as the Swiss populace owns and keeps at home the full, uh, fully automatic battle rifles that are used by their military. Wow, they don't jump up and shoot people? On their own? Somehow they've got much better trained rifles than we do. Apparently. They must. Apparently they must. We, we need to, you know, find out maybe their mama's potty trained them better. I don't know what it was exactly, but their guns are much nicer. Well, I'm yeah. That that's a, it's an interesting uh, thought. We talked earlier to, about the fact that in all of these terrorist attacks what what i can't understand why the president has won't accept this fact whether it's orlando or or boston uh, or uh, san bernardino or fort hood or paris or brussels there's one common denominator and it's not the gun no it's not the gun it's the gun free zone uh, all but two of our mass murders in our country since 1950 have occurred in these gun-free zones. The politicians don't want to talk about that. For one thing, it's their culpability that would be discussed because they've put those laws on the books and they've kept those laws on the books. Slaughter after slaughter after slaughter when people are disarmed because that's exactly where dirtbags choose to strike. And the politicians, instead of getting rid of the facilitating cause – and not the necessary the, the real cause, of course, is the heart of man. But instead of getting rid of what makes it so much easier for dirt bags, no, 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 no. They want to turn around and blame uh, decent people who have guns to protect themselves against criminals and government. Yeah, very true. Um, I direct people to your website at uh, Gun Owners of America GOA and. Um, GunOwners.org is the uh, actual address, and if you go there, you can sign up for our free email alerts. It's uh, what we use a lot in our lobbying, uh, getting people informed so they can take action well, easily. Well, people need to be informed because there's another onslaught coming. I, I can sense it. I think uh, we'll be yeah. busy. We only send the email out when they're trying to do something in Congress, and our whole operating philosophy comes from the late Senator Everett Dirksen, who said, uh, when I feel the heat, I uh, see the light. <laughs> That's great. Larry Pratt with the Gun Owners of America, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate being with you. Yep. Have a great day. I uh, always like having Larry on. He cuts right to the chase. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll get to more of your phone calls. Uh, I don't think we've got a line open right now. In fact, 314-969-9797. Your thoughts on what Larry and I discussed, the president's speech today, uh, the ongoing investigation into Orlando. Uh, it's all coming up right here on the Mark Cox Show.